Hey guys, I'm a lecturer, Fun Man, and here you'll be learning about E1 and E2 reaction. So, does it remind you of anything? A letter with a 1 and a letter with a 2. Remember your SN1, SN2? They're very similar. So, in this case, the E stands for elimination, and the 1 means is uni. Molecular and two means it's a bi molecular reaction. So just like SN1, SN2, you would know that this one could also mean that the order of reaction is one, and for two means the order reaction is two. So just a quick one revision here. If I list down the factors, they will affect the E1 or E2 reaction, or what the properties of each of them, I can summarize as follows. Okay? So this is a substrate. Substrate means your starting material. You must have alkyl halide or something with a good leaving group. So Alkyl halide, let me just put Rx. But which kind? Since we know that for a one unimolecular reaction, we are supposed to form a carbocation ion. So normally we must have tertiary Rx. And for the E2, it is primary alkyl halide. But most importantly, you have to consider the stability of carbocation ion. This is what matters most. If I can generate a very stable carbocation in the first step, it will undergo E1. For E2, it will tend towards the steric hindrance. So steric effect is the key thing you have to understand. Now, the other property you have to know is that in both cases, Let me just use X as a leaving group. In both cases, we are losing HX, hydrogen, and the leaving group, X. And it's not any hydrogen in the molecule. They must be one carbon apart. So we know that this is the leaving group. So which hydrogen should we pick up? Okay, It must be the hydrogen that connects to the next adjacent carbon. So X connects to this carbon, you have to look the next carbon atom, which is this, that hydrogen are possible. So here we have two possibilities here, one and two. Okay, first of all, you have to understand this. We can't take it from these two because they are all attached to the same carbon. Now, the other thing you have to know is one of these two will be what we call anti periplanar anti peri planar to the leaving group. What it means is this is your cyclohexane molecule. All right. Now suppose right this yellow ball here is a leaving group. Periplanar means they're on the same plane. Anti means it's on the opposite side. So this is pointing up. So these two are pointing down. Do you see? Pointing down. So if I point to the side, these two bonds here are not anti periplanar but this bond here and this bond, they are anti periplanar which means to say that suppose all these are bonded to hydrogen except for this yellow ball here, the one that we could eliminate would just be the leaving group and the next carbon, one of these two hydrogens here that my fingers are holding at. Not the rest of them because they are not anti periplanar so for elimination reaction, please note that you must have the H and the leaving group to be anti periplanar So in both cases, what do you use to pick up this H? Now here we have a delta positive charge arises from the polarization of this leaving group. Delta minus, delta plus, then the next one will be delta minus. So the next atom must be delta positive. So that's exactly the reason why you could pick up 
one of these hydrogen, but not this. Because if you go further in terms of the polarization, these two hydrogens will be delta minus. And what we want to see is a HX, in which here the hydrogen is delta positive. X, the even group, is delta negative. And we know that this hydrogen that's going to come off is going to pick up by a base. And the base attracts H plus, and potentially only these two hydrogens here could come off as an H plus ion.